Okay, hello, John Dove here from the Advocacy Club. We've just had the March session of the Public Speaking Advocacy Club, um, and our members have been delivering uh, an interesting array of topics tonight. So what I'm going to do now is talk a little bit about public speaking and specifically speaking with conviction. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is eye contact. Now, of course, the best way that you can achieve eye contact is by practicing your presentation a number of times in advance to the point that you know it fairly well, that you're not note tied. And the, the reason I say that eye contact is important, particularly in relation to speaking with conviction, is number one, you're able to speak up, i.e. what I mean by that is having your mouth and your eyes facing forwards. So when, you're, when your mouth is facing forwards, obviously your voice can project and your voice can be heard much better than it would do otherwise if you were speaking down into a piece of paper like so. And secondly, you're able to maintain eye contact with your audience throughout, whether it's a tribunal, if you're in court or um, in, in any other setting where you're performing any form of public speaking. And naturally, if you're able to maintain eye contact, it feels a lot more conversational with your audience. They feel a lot more engaged and your message can be received significantly better. So that helps you be uh, a lot more convincing and therefore speak with conviction. Um, the second little piece of advice I'm going to give is before you give any form of presentation, any form of public speaking, always take a second just to have a little breather beforehand. Um, you know, it might only take a second or two, but just breathe in. It helps you gather your thoughts, so it helps you uh, be a little more confident when it comes to giving your presentation. Also, you might find that, you know, you might be going up onto a stage where you've had to walk up some steps beforehand and you might, you know, lose your breath, for example. So you, it just gives you a second to catch your breath. It also just gives you that second just to catch your thoughts as well. Um, because, you know, don't forget, whenever it, you're coming to do any form of presentation or any form of public speaking, Remember that people are there to listen to you, you know, whether it's in a court setting and you're speaking in front of a judge, whether you're in front of a room of people um, to, to whom you're going to present, they want to listen to what you have to say. And they're willing to wait a few seconds while you compose yourself um, and put yourself in the right frame of mind. So it's always important to just have that little pause just beforehand, catch your breath, take a deep breath uh, and away you go. Speak in your own time. Uh, this moves me on to speed, and I, I talk about this every single week, but it's massively, massively important. When it comes to, to the appropriate speed for, for any form of presentation, I tend to say it's about 100 to 120 words a minute. So, for example, you were delivering six-minute speeches tonight, so you'd expect that to be somewhere between 600 and 720 words if you'd typed out a speech. Um, and, of course, that's important because the slower you speak, the more authoritative you come. If you speak quickly, you appear rushed, you appear flustered, you appear unconfident. So by naturally speaking slower, you just have that air of authority. You seem like you're in command of your material and you actually know what you're talking about. It also allows you to have control of your voice as well. So when you speak slower, you can present your words better. They come out more fluidly. And you've just got that uh, that air of authority when it is that you're presenting. Uh, pausing is also important as well. Uh, and this stems from speaking slowly. So once you're speaking slowly, you have the confidence to pause every now and again. So, of course, uh, most presentations have sort of a, a beginning, middle and end, introduction, main body, conclusion, whatever it might be. And normally your opening sentence is the way of, you know, sort of grabbing the attention of the audience. So you might open with a bold statement, a bold statistic, a rhetorical question, maybe. Whatever that opening sentence is that you've used to, to grab your audience's attention, have a pause at the end of it. Let that let that sink in. Um, it, it, it allows the audience to be on the same page with you. It might even be that you... Um, are, are presenting in court in front of a judge because I know many of you um, are either lawyers or aspiring lawyers. Um, after that opening line, just pause. It just adds a, a certain amount of effect. And then during your presentation, you'll have certain significant points. You might have um, an important statistic that you've given um, or you might give the most important 
and convincing point within your presentation, pause after that. It really adds effect and it just allows your audience to think about the point that you've made and, and really take in how significant it is. Um, the other thing is that a lot of um, a lot of people, when it comes to any form of presentation, feel they need to put on a certain voice or a certain accent. So they think that they need to speak a certain way, whether it's received pronunciation or or whatever it might be. And um, don't fall into that trap. Don't try and be somebody that you're not. If you've got an accent, don't worry about it. It's not a problem at all. And it's actually better to speak in your own accent. Because when it comes to public speaking, presentations, advocacy, you've got so much to think about. You know, you're thinking about um, the content itself, trying to remember all of that, trying to remember the certain points. You're trying to remember um, the specific structure. You're trying to remember to speak slowly. So when you've got all of this, trying to put on a voice is just an extra thing for you to think about. So it takes so much pressure off by speaking in your own accent. Also, it adds a bit of character to your um, presentation. You seem a lot less wooden and people are more willing to actually listen and engage with uh, with your content. Um, the last point I'll make on that when it comes to the accent is if you are following what I said earlier, i.e. speaking more slowly, when you speak more slowly, even if you keep your own accent, you're going to sound slightly differently anyway. So um, so you don't really need to put on an accent. So I think if you want to sound convincing, if you want to sound genuine, speak it in your own voice. Don't try and put on somebody else's accent. Um, keep it simple as well. So when you're trying to, to you know, speak with conviction, speak with authority, keep your points nice and simple. So people feel the need to try and sound clever by using convoluted language, complex sentence structures. Um, Sometimes it doesn't quite land the way that you think it will. And it also makes your presentation a little bit more difficult to deliver if you've got to remember all these difficult words and difficult sentence structures. So keep it simple. Simple points are normally the most convincing in any event. So, you know, if you keep your, your um, you, effectively what you're trying to say, try and keep it simple, keep the sentences a little bit shorter. Um, it makes it easier for the audience to follow what you're saying. It makes it easier for you to deliver. And normally a simple presentation is a better presentation. So don't make something unnecessarily complicated if it doesn't need to be. Um, and then lastly, you want to actually show confidence as well. So, you, so even if you're absolutely trembling inside and you're massively nervous, you still want to give off the authority, give off the impression that you are um, confident. So I think, you know, if you are speaking more slowly, obviously that's going to come across anyway. When you speak, speak with your voice up. So try and speak loudly so that you can be heard at the back of the room. Or, of course, if you are uh, present presenting um, on a screen like I am now on Zoom, um, you know, try and speak loudly anyway. So keep your voice up. That gives you um, the, the, or gives the impression that you're confident anyway. Um, also, when it comes to confidence, when you present and when you're delivering the, the various sentences, don't throw in any words that would take away from your confidence. So what I see occasionally is someone will be making a point and they know that that point is right, but they'll say something like, well, I think that the case is this. If you know something, say it. Don't preface it where it might be this. I think it's this. If you're confident and you know something, say it. Don't take away from that by throwing in unnecessary phrases that uh, make you sound less confident than you are. So those are just a few tips on speaking with conviction and uh, hope you found those helpful.